all the previous videos of legal self-defense elements dealt with specific categories that will be evaluated in a court of law. This last element is an overarching assessment of each of those previous categories. That element is reasonableness. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to the DFI channel and click the notification bell to stay current on all the Defensive Firearms Instruction YouTube videos. Stay with me to the end of this video for a recommendation of several nationally recognized subject matter experts on the larger topic of self-defense in general, not just the physical skills part. We're going to talk briefly about the fifth element of legal self-defense, reasonableness. You'll see how it affects all the others that we have discussed. I'm Riley Schrader with Defensive Firearms Instruction. I help new and veteran shooters get and improve their defensive shooting skills by teaching the art, science, and laws of self-defense, whether guns are involved or not. I'm not an attorney, I'm not practicing law, and this is not legal advice. All of your actions before, during, and after a confrontation that has come to the attention of investigating officers and the district attorney will be microscopically scrutinized. Each of the elements that we have discussed in this series, innocence, imminence, proportionality, and avoidance all have their specific characteristics and variables that define them. Each one of these elements will be evaluated by others who are not at your incident. From the concept of reasonableness, what would another person with the same training, knowledge, and experience do under the same set of circumstances? Your actions throughout must be judged reasonable for you to successfully claim self-defense in a court of law. The essence of reasonableness is this. Would a hypothetical other person with the same knowledge, experience, and training under the same circumstances have conducted themselves in the same manner as you did? Would they have remained in the situation or would they have conducted a tactical retreat? Would that other person have used the same amount of force in that incident and used it at the same time or a similar time in the, in the event? The list goes on and on. And understand this as it pertains to jurors. They don't know you, they probably already don't like you, and they certainly unequivocally have no idea or concept of the chaos and pain you were experiencing when you were attacked. It is exceedingly likely that they have no idea whatsoever what some other person with the same knowledge, training, and experience as you would do in the same circumstances. You, however, through your attorney and your expert witness, will have the opportunity and the absolute legal right as established by extensive case law, at least if your case goes in front of a jury, to educate that jury on your, of your so-called peers to your state of mind, knowledge, experience, and decision-making at the time of the incident. In that manner, you, or rather your expert witness, can offer the jury an objective look into your thought process and explain to them why when and how you responded to the attacker's actions in the manner that you did. An attorney experienced in dealing with legitimate self-defense cases will be invaluable with this and many other components of your defense. If your case is argued in front of a jury, it will ultimately come down to who is the more convincing storyteller 
The prosecution will be telling his version of events about how evil and premeditated your actions were. Your attorney, on the other hand, along with your expert witness, will be telling the jury about how you were compelled to use defensive force based on your attacker's actions toward you and how you had no other choice but to defend yourself. This whole concept of reasonableness, otherwise known as the reasonable man doctrine in legal circles, is a very deep subject in and of itself. Legal scholars, jurists, and others have wrestled with this concept since the beginning of time. Do some research of your own with the search term reasonable man doctrine, and you'll discover that there are many nuances depending on who's authoring the description. I give it a reasonable effort. See what I did there? In my Elements of Self-Defense Law presentation, but I absolutely defer to subject matter experts on a deeper explanation of reasonableness. For your reference, please consider adding books by these authors to your self-defense library. The very noteworthy Mass Ayub and his seminal book, In the Gravest Extreme. Get it, read it, then read it again. If you only have one book on your self-defense library shelf, it should be this one. Attorney Andrew Branca is a very enthusiastic and knowledgeable advocate of self-defense and Second Amendment issues. He presents a very comprehensive in-person and online course on the legal aftermath of using force in your defense, both at the user level and at a more in-depth instructor level. Where Ayub's book is widely regarded as a standard text in the training industry regarding legal self-defense, the third edition of Mr. Branca's book, Laws of Self-Defense, takes the study and analysis of self-defense law to a much greater depth with extensive references to the various penal code sections, case law, and jury instructions. Mark McYoung and Jenna Meek, co-authors of What You Don't Know Can Kill You, have encapsulated a much broader perspective of self-defense than the previous two recommendations. What they've done in their book is to provide a 30,000-foot perspective of self-defense, starting from understanding, recognizing, and managing the different types of violence, all the way through the legal, civil, and emotional aftermath. They clearly explain how self-defense is not merely becoming adept at a defensive skill or two and calling it good, but rather an ever-changing puzzle, the pieces of which you need to be quite aware of to have a better grasp of the big picture. Their book is not a one-stop shop, and they make a point of this, stating that each of the areas discussed in the book is worthy of considerable extra time and effort to research, learn, and incorporate into your overall self-defense plans. Each one of these authors, their books, their websites, and their individual recommendations are well worth the time and effort for you to study. I'll put links to their books and websites in the description below. As always, please don't take my word for any of this. Do your own research and verify what I've said from other subject matter experts. If you're in the Southern California area and you'd like to schedule a presentation of the elements of self-defense law to your group, or if you'd like to discuss setting up your personal firearms training program, send me an email through my website. If you like this video and want to learn more about the elements of self-defense law or watch some of my videos to help you get started on your firearms training, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to stay updated on the latest videos. I'm Riley Schrader. Thanks for watching and see you next time with Defensive Firearms Instruction.